Hello again, this is Mr. Frazier, and I'm going to briefly go over Lesson 5.2. <clears throat> lesson 5.2 had to deal with being able to name stuff. Uh, this is kind of review. <clears throat> 5.2 was, this was exponential, which was our compound interest. This one's linear, which was our simple interest. Okay, we had to be able to identify domains and ranges. So that means you follow the green line and you tell me the X's and Y's that are possible because that's what a domain or a range is. So for this first one, the domain would be all of the X's from this point where we're at. So I'm going to use the blue so you can see what we're talking about. From here, going this way. So that means all of my x's would have to be greater than whatever this number is. I'm going to make it up and just say it's negative 2. So all of my x answers have to be greater than negative 2. Whereas all my y's, I start on the y axis, which would be at 0. And I notice that the line goes all the way up. It doesn't go below 0. So all of my y answers must be greater than 0 and the y answers are called my range. So I go ahead and I put the dot, dotted line. I know it has to be higher than this. Okay. So I know all of my y's are greater than 0. Okay. Now in the linear it's a little bit different because all of my x's, if I follow that line, those arrows mean it goes on forever so that means my x's are always going to be all of the x's. All real numbers. And that's only because as I keep going on, the x's that go with it will go on as well. And all of my y's are also all real numbers. Now, let's institute the vocabulary so that you understand we're not talking about x and y. We're talking about all the x's, which is known as the domain. So you have to identify it that it's the domain. And then you use x is greater than. And then you have to identify this one as the domain because domain is all your x answers. And then, of course, range is all of your y's. Now, one of the last words is the word asymptote. And an asymptote is the line that the curve will not touch. It'll get really, really close, but it'll never touch. So an asymptote only happens in exponential problems. Okay. An asymptote only happens in exponential problems. And the asymptote would be y equals 0. Because no matter what, this line will get infinitely closer to zero, but it will never touch zero. Thus, our range has to be greater than zero because it never goes below zero. It's got to go above. Now, if it was drawn upside down, like you've seen in some of your Carnegie work, then it would be all the y's less than zero, obviously, because the line is lower than, or the curve is below the zero. But my asymptote is still y equals 0. Now this should look familiar because as we've moved on to 5, 4, you'll know that y equals 0 is the x-axis, just like y x equals 0 is the y. And that was the lesson for 5, 2. Remember, if you're looking for the textbook work that we did, again, go to Moodle. It's located there, so you can write down the correct answers. Thank you very much.